we gather to together here in order to give a, a refuge ceremony to Johann Sebastian Orfe, not Orpheus. In Capie, uh, in Capie. Yes, in Capie. <laughs> but you appear at Or as Orpheus there. Ah, yeah, yes. that is my nickname. Yes, sorry. That's good. Orpheus is converting to Jodo și So, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, before making the ceremony, I need. Uh, uh, so I need yes. to um, uh -huh. uh, the king of dream, uh, the king uh, Morpheus, no? the king of dream. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> the, uh, this garden, yeah. a little sleeping box. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I sleep in Sansara. Yes. <laughs> uh, before, before go, before uh, offering the uh, refuge ceremony to Sebastian, we need to check. Uh, his understanding of the basic of Jodo Shinshu. Okay? So, um, but even before that, uh, I would like to ask Sebastian to tell us the reasons why he wants to be in Amida G and not in other Pure Land organizations. Uh, yes. Uh, the why, why he wants to rejoin Amida G. Okay. Yes, uh, dear Joshua Sensei. Uh, well, uh, as as many of you know, I used to be a member of Amida G, but uh, I decided maybe to explore, let's say, other uh, schools of uh, basically the Chinese schools, the Shandao lineage, and also the school of the Thirteen Patriarchs. Yes, which is the let's say the National Pure Land School of of China, mainland mainland China. Yes, uh, I was curious and I told Sensei when we first talked about this decision that maybe my karma was not ready. Uh, maybe when I joined Amida G because I used to I used to have a lot of baggage, you know, karmic baggage from previous schools. I used to practice Theravada and Tibetan Buddhism. And I was maybe intellectually, I agreed with uh, Shinran Shonin and the Jodo Shinshu. It made sense to me intellectually, but still uh, there, there were the, the, the many emotional barriers, maybe emotional, uh, deep, deep rooted, you know, uh, desires and attachments to previous self power practices uh, didn't allow me to fully comprehend Shinran, Shinran's teaching and the, tw and the 18th vow on a heart level, let's say, on a very visceral way. So due to this reason, I decided that maybe other schools that mixed self-power and other power, like, for example, the 13, uh, the school of the 13 patriarchs, uh, they consider themselves to be not a uh, other power school exclusively. Yes, I know this uh, through their own words. I am just quoting what they say, because uh -huh. I used to work with the webmaster of Pure Landers, which is a very famous a quite famous website of Pure Land Buddhism of the Chinese school. And they say that it is not, on, not only Amida, but it is also self-power combined with the other power of Amida Buddha. And they consider that the 19th vow is the most important one. So they practice according to the 19th vow. Yes, and the 18th vow, they also consider to be, think that is, only the like the the most basic requirement to be born in the pure land. But if you want to upgrade your lotus grade, yes, in the pure land, if you want to become a Buddha faster in the pure land, you have to still practice morality, meditation, and combine it with Nienfo and Sutra recitation and dedicate your own merits along with the blessings of Amida Buddha. Okay, to be fair with them, they they do consider that Amida Buddha helps you, but you have to put a little bit of your own. Uh, self power, all right. Uh, so, so uh, like uh, for example, when while we in Jodo Shinshu consider that the most important vow is the 18th vow, which makes us to be born in the true fulfilled land of the pure land or the center of the pure land where we attain uh, enlightenment and there are no uh, levels there. There are no levels so, there, but, but according uh, to the 13th, uh, the, the school of the 13 patriarchs which have many patriarchs who used to combine Sasen and uh, Nienfo. 
And they were great masters, I mean, in their own right. Like, for example, Jong Min Yang Shou, who was uh, both a uh, Chan or Zen patriarch and also a Pure Land patriarch. So they didn't see a, a problem combining uh, this self power with other power. It was traditional uh, for, for this uh, Chinese Pure Land school, which I think uh, they are very sincere and all. And I try to practice, I did try to do my best there, you know. Uh, but uh, later, uh, I, I discovered that, you know, when I try to practice Nien for try to meditate, you know, and they and they are, uh, they also they don't have a problem with you putting your hands in like the Diana Mudra, no, that is uh, re associated with with Sasen practice and vipassana and you know meditation. You see, so it was very appealing to my ego, yes, <laughs> because I wanted to maybe earn something, yes, uh, to be to to attain to a higher level. Uh, I don't know of concentration, maybe enjoy. It. It's something like this, but I I realized quickly that that, that there was something missing. Like uh, when I was part of Jodo Shinshu, I felt that there was uh, an intimacy with Amida Buddha. You see, but when I did this practice, uh, I realized that this practice was like kind of getting in the way between Amida and me. So I was trying to to create things in my mind. So then I decided to join the Shandao lineage, which I consider was like a middle ground. It was Chinese, but the, according to them, they were like 18th Bao school, similar to Jodo Shinshu. So I said, okay, let's give it a try. Yes. And then I, when I joined the Shandao lineage, their teachings are very beautiful. You know, they're beautiful. They always talk about faith, about Master Shandao or Sendo, as it is called in, in Japanese. Uh, you know, as, as you know, uh, Honen was inspired by Master Shandao uh, to found a separate school uh, of uh, Jodo or Pure Land uh, as a separate religious movement in Japan. So I say, okay, so Shandao is a great teacher. No, he was considered to be an emanation of Amida Buddha himself. You see, so uh, okay, uh, but the thing was that. Uh, I realized that they had a lot of doctrinal uh, problems because they accepted the students too quickly, you see? So I had many- Too quickly, so they, they accepted members too quickly. Yes, uh, for example, uh, if you wanted to take refuge, you, you could do it and they wouldn't ask you anything about your comprehensions as long as you practice Nienfo, Nienfo a lot. So they put at all a lot of emphasis in the Nienfo practice but not on doctrinal matters. For example, what is karma? What is samsara? Uh, not in, in opinion, the understanding of the teaching. So yes, they, 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 they do not check. They do not check the understanding of their members. Yes, they do not check it uh, thoroughly. Uh, they are very. It seems maybe not the, the main masters or the main teachers there, the Master Huijin and Jing Song, but maybe the middle ranks. They, they they seem to be quite interested in numbers. That, that is my impression, yes? That was for example, there are, I, I often meet, uh, for example, uh, lately, I met with uh, two Shandao uh, members who asked me a lot of questions, uh, but, and they seem to, um, uh, to not understand the basics of uh, general Buddhism and uh, Pure Land in particular. And they seem to, to don't have anybody with whom they can talk about their uh, questions yes, and their uh, doubts. Uh, yes, you see the Shandao lineage is very much similar to the school of the 13 patriarchs uh, regarding the fact that they consider, maybe they don't say it openly, but they consider Pure Land Buddhism to be a very Asian thing. You know, there is a lot of people from Asia, which is okay, you see. But th there seems to be a lot, uh, a lot that is lost in translation, if you know what I mean. You know, there is a lot of lost in co in cultural things. They assume that Westerners are the same as Asian, and clearly there are some differences uh, in idiosyncrasies. Can you please repeat the last sentence? Can you, can you please repeat the last sentence? Uh, the, the, there is a lot. Uh, there are many di cultural differences between Western and Eastern countries. You see. Uh, of course, we are all human beings trapped in samsara, but uh, the demeanor, the behavior, you know, 
uh, of people in Japan and China is different from Westerners. Yes, here Westerners are very much into they are very much into new age ideas. You see, it's very prevalent here in here in the West. Yes, I, I ignore maybe Japan is not like so much like that. Maybe people that are more like a, 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 a like materialists. Who knows? You see, but my impression was that uh, they didn't put a lot of emphasis in the doctrine. So many people who took refuge with me in both lineages, in the 13th school lineage and the Chandao lineage, I know for a fact that there are people who don't understand basic Buddhism because uh, I had the chance uh, to talk with many of them, yes, personally, and I know them, you see? I, I have nothing against them personally, you see? But I know for a fact that they don't get basic Mahayana Buddhism, yes? And maybe they don't- And they tend to mix, they tend to mix things Yes, they tend to mix a lot of things. Yes, for example, uh, there are many people in the in in, in for example, there, there was a person I won't say the name. You see, but it's a good example, so I will I will mention it. There was a a, a a person yes from Latin America who took refuge with me in the Shandao lineage, and he was a Tibetan Buddhist teacher. You see, so he had a even a sangha. Uh, I think maybe he was a teacher and he was still providing lessons. So even after he took refuge in the Shandao lineage, he still continued to provide uh, other power practices and he didn't consider that to be a problem. And nobody told him that when you took refuge in Amida Buddha, you took refuge in exclusive, the exclusive Nembutsu, no? Nienfo, yeah? Uh, and you see in the, in the books of these uh, teachers, yes, of the Shandao lineage, they sometimes they are not very clear in doctrinal matters and they don't establish guidelines. Like for example, we have in Amida Ji, there are very simple guidelines, the eight elements of faith. It's very simple. Anybody can understand it. In the, in the Shandao school, they have a lot of things, but they don't require members to, you know, to be serious about their decision. So that really turned me off. Yeah, that, that really disappointed me, you, you see. Because I came from Amida Jin. In Amida Ji, I uh, one thing was is still clear to me is that Amida Ji is serious about membership. You see, if if you see somebody uh, you know spitting uh, you know ground points of view, uh, they are kicked out, and they and they should be, yes. and they should be they should be kicked out because we are in a serious business here. We are talking about you know uh, salvation from samsaric existence. So this is serious for Buddhists at least for people who consider the words of Shakyamuni Buddha to be true, you see? Uh, so I think that that is the reason why I came back is because, <laughs> uh, because maybe in my innocence, <laughs> in the, maybe in my, let's say, I was very naive. I thought that maybe people were equally, equally serious about Buddhism outside Amiraji, but I realized something that is actually very sad is that what we do in Amiraji, yes, shouldn't be so special, shouldn't be, you see what I mean? Shouldn't be yes. an exception. I mean, this is what a, a, temple, a Buddhist temple should do. All temples of all yes. lineages, they should teach basic Mahayana, karma, samsara. They all, all members should know this and then they should practice their own self power or other power practice, you see? But that is yes. not what is happening. <laughs> there is total chaos. If, if people, people can clearly know what Amida G stands for from the very beginning. Yes. And they can choose to be members and follow Amida G uh, rules and regulations and way of teaching or simply give up and uh, go to other places. Yes. yes. So, and um, please explain to uh, first, let me uh, greet um, Chikai. So, Welcome, Chikai. Namo Amidabu. Namo Amidabu. <laughs> Namo Amidabu. Hello, Chikai. Namo Amidabu. Hola, ¿qué tal? ¿Qué tal, ¿Qué tal Tomás? Un gusto verte. Oh, igualmente. Hola, hola, Namo Amidabu. Hola, Chikai. Namo Amidabu. Hola, hola. Hola, Namo Amidabu. And uh, now, uh, please explain to, uh, to us, uh, in your own words, uh, the, the essential points of the Jodo Shinshu teaching as we explain at Tamidaji. Yes. We uh, teach at Tamidaji. Yes, I would like to summarize it yes, in, the, in something that actually appears in the logo of Tamidaji and I think is highly important because this is the 
like the, the, the you know, the vertebrae or the, the, the skeleton of Amida G is this, the eight elements of faith, you see? So the first, the first element of faith, yes, is uh, to, to consider, yes, or to, or to deeply believe that Amida Buddha is a real enlightened being, you see? So this is very important, yes? Uh, why is because this is the this is constantly denied by many Jodo, so-called Jodo Shinshu organizations around the world. Yes, there are many false scholars who deny this. Yes, which I think is the most stupid thing to do because uh, if you if you deny uh, the object of your faith, then there is nothing. <laughs> you see, the, the, uh, the existence of Amida Buddha to accept the, the existence of Amida Buddha and his pure land. And of course, of course. By, by by definition, his creation, his masterpiece, which is the, the the pure land, no. And there are many many false scholars who complicate people's minds about this. You know, they say that the pure land is a state of mind, or they say that Amida Buddha is like a like a fictional character, like Hamlet. So of course this is totally BS. This is total, totally false. No? Shakyamuni Buddha spoke about Amida Buddha as a real enlightened being. And, there, and th then we come to the second point, which is to believe the words of Shakyamuni Buddha in the larger sutra about Amida Buddha and his pure land, which are very clear words. You see, you see, uh, uh, I have here the, uh, I have it here in my altar, the, uh, the pure land sutra. You see, yes, uh, and uh, for me, is this is this is the most important uh, sutra. You see, is it's also the most beautiful for me. Yes, because it's very. You also clear. translated it into Spanish. Yes, yes, of course. Together uh, with my commentary. Yes, yes I, I have done it uh, more than more than once, and also because I have uh, it is a pleasure for me to do it, and I learn a lot. And you see, this sutra is, uh, is, is very beautiful because it has basic teachings on karma, uh, teachings about who the Buddhas are, about compassion, about Amida Buddha. Uh, it's a very, very complete uh, and thorough, uh, you know, explanation, you see. So the second point with Amida Ji is to believe the words of Amida Buddha, the story of Dharmakara Bodhisattva becoming Amida Buddha, you see, and the 48 vows and, you know, and so on, so forth. Then the third point is to wish to be born in Amida Buddha's pure land. You see, this is also very important, you see, uh, because, uh, for example, the, the school that, that was founded by Ipen, Ipen Shonin, yes, and other similar uh, 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 teachers that appeared in Japan and elsewhere, they maybe equated the pure land to a state of consciousness. Yes, it's, it's not, not very clear at all. You see, but the words of Honen, Genshin, and, and Shinran, and Shakyamuni, and even Nagarjuna, Tan Luan, and all the patriarchs, they all say that you go to the Pure Land, uh, of course, after you die, you see? And, then you should, and we should aspire uh, to, to go there, yes? It, 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 it's just a simple wish. Yes, uh, it's like you say in your books, you want to go to that park, uh, yes, that's it. Yes, you want to go there. <laughs> Yes, you have to. We have to aspire yeah, to go. You, you, yeah. If you want to go to a certain place, first you need to be to sure live. that place really exists. <laughs> yes, uh, you, you, you can't go to a place that doesn't exist. You can't wish to be born in the pure land which you think which does not exist. <laughs> yes, yes, this is this is very important, no? And of course, we have the the, the owner of the park. Let's say the owner of the Samida Buddha, the method, which is the primal vow, which is like the vehicle. So we have everything very clear in the sutras. So even a child can comprehend this. You see? Yes. Uh, so the yes. This, so this we wish point. to be born in the pure land because we know the pure land is real. Of the course, real yeah. enlightened place. Because we so, know it is uh, real. What is? Uh, please continue with the explanation uh, of the um, eight elements of faith. Yes. The fourth. Then the, and then the fourth is the the two twofold profound conviction, which is uh, Nishu Jin Shin in uh, Sino-Japanese, so uh, this is very important and this is explained uh, by Master Shandao. You see, uh, Shinran Shonin quoted Master Shandao explaining that the deep mind, you know, which is the deep, this deep mind, this, pro this profound conviction, this profound mentality. First, to know that we are evil, yes, incapable, uh, even pathetic, you know, uh, sentient beings who are trapped in samsara, who have been trapped here without any respite from suffering, and with any opportunity to actually uh, attain Buddhahood, yes? 
And then the second thing is that in this dark situation, yes, in this uh, hopeless situation with self-power, uh, we accept that the 48 vows of Amida Buddha envelop sentient beings, yes, and this great power is more than capable to take us there without asking anything from us. It's basically that, yes? It's first, in, in, in simple words, is this, to know that we cannot attain Buddhahood through self-power, and to recognize that we can attain Buddhahood through the power of Amida alone, yes, basically, yes, through the power of his primal vow, the 18th vow, yes. Then the, the fifth uh, element is the, the, to believe in the primal vow with, uh, without any doubt, you see, and, and to never put into question our birth in the pure land, you see. Why? It's because we, we rely completely on the power of Amida Buddha, so given that we rely completely on him, it is up to him. It is, up, it, it is in Amida's hands that we go to the pure land. So there is no question about, oh, maybe I am bad or I am not that good. It doesn't have to do with anything good or bad that we do, yes? Or with any skill or lack of skill that we think we have or we don't have, whatever. It doesn't matter. We shouldn't insist upon our good or our evil, but re rely on the transcendental merits that Amida Buddha dedicates to us, you see? And yes. be, sure, be sure of birth in the pure land. Then the sixth element is very important. Yes, this is a, a, you know, a conclusion of the previous elements, is to, to uh, deeply believe that birth in the pure land occurs after death, you see? For example, I know, <laughs> I know that you have, you have had experiences with this yourself, with the, 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 the heresies of Uno and Bloom, and these guys are, I mean, in my opinion, they are deranged or totally crazy or dishonest because they tell people that Shinji is like, oh, yes, it's to live your life to the fullest, blah, blah, blah. It's like <laughs> uh, psychological yeah. bullshit. And they say, yes, yeah, the pure land is here and now, and, and Shinji is enlightenment. And this is totally wrong. Yes. You go to the pure land when you die, because obviously in the pure land, people have a lot of special powers. Yes. Like, for example, know all your past lives. Uh, transport, uh, I mean, multiply your bodies, have bodies of gold, of glory, emptiness, uh, bo uh, bodies of know, emptiness. Know the thoughts of others. Know the thoughts know the of thought. others. Uh, you know, have a Samboga Kaya body. I mean, uh, if these guys think that they are capable of, capable of doing this, they should, uh, they should be taken to a psychiatric hospital. Yes. You see? And, and, and we have uh, also in English and in Spanish, uh, in the book, uh, we, we, we have a collection of passages in the book, The True Teaching on Amida Buddha and His Pure Land, that you also translated into Spanish. We have a big collection of passages there on the true meaning of birth in the Pure Land, in which we prove in Shakyamuni's own words, in Shinran's own words, Honen's, Renyo's words, that the Pure Land is indeed after death, and it means the attainment of enlightenment. So those who, who pretend that they uh, uh, are in the pure land here and now should uh, be enlightened beings. And yes. if they are not, then the pure land is not here and now. Yes, Yes, that, that is a very important passage of that book, no? the last section of the true teaching on Amida Buddha and his pure land. And if you are honest about it, there is no question about Shakyamuni Buddha and the seven patriarchs and Shinran and Renyo. They all believed, yes, with one voice, with one mind, that the pure land is attained after death. It's simple. Yes. It's, it's post -mortem. And the seventh uh, elements of and, faith. And, and the seventh is the Nembutsu, the Tariki Nembutsu, not the self-power Nembutsu, not the, the Nembutsu of the 20th vow, uh, or maybe of the 19th vow of mixed practices. No. It's the Nembutsu of saying, Amira Buddha, thank you for saving me as I am, yes, a sinner, you know, uh, a person who cannot keep, uh, you know, precepts, who cannot do self-power practices. But I say Namo Amida Bu because I know that Amida Buddha takes me without asking me anything. See? So it's the Nembutsu of faith. Nembutsu of faith. of faith. Nembutsu of faith. Tariki Nembutsu. And eighth, and I think this is very important, <laughs> is not mix Nembutsu with other practices from inside the Buddha Dharma or outside the Buddha Dharma, which is something that... Uh, 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 and this this was my big discovery when I uh, tried to explore other paths different than Amidaji is that almost all the temples that I that I consulted 
what I, that I went to, they all combine things. Yes. They all tell people, almost all of them, yes, tell people, oh, yes, you can be Christian, you can be Buddhist. Uh -huh. uh, if you practice Nembutsu, yes, but you can also meditate. I mean, uh, it is chaos out there. And I think that if Pure Land Buddhism is to survive, yes, and this is my opinion, maybe this is not true, but this is my opinion. I think that we need more institutions like Amida Ji that are serious, orthodox, that are clear to understand for the lay people, and there are uh, zero tolerance for BS. You see, that this is very important. Yes. So you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sure, you know, uh, Amida Ji does not have the monopoly on truth because, uh, or, or on faith, in the sense that um, uh, I'm sure that there are many people there, out there in the world, uh, of, um, in Jodo Shinshu, for example, who have true faith, who never mix uh, Nembutsu with other practices. I'm sure there are anywhere in other schools as well, not only in Amidaji, but we at Ami what we do at Amidaji is to put these things, uh, these eight elements of faith and the, uh, in, into clear uh, statements. We are very clear on what people should do or not do if they want to really be in agreement with the primal vow. We, we offer clear guidance. This is what we do. And we have the courage to say, uh, this is true, this is not true. Uh, in the way uh, the pure land is taught nowadays, you know? So... Um, Yes, I, I think that, that, that uh, uh, of course, I do believe that there are people with Shinjin, even in, in uh, you know, Hong Kong, and many people in Japan, I'm pretty of sure, course, yeah. you, you, you see, uh, but I think that maybe if they have faith, it's because of their good karma, of course, and they believe in the privacy of their homes, but maybe, in my opinion, they, uh, the institutions that are around them, uh, they have to shut their ears <laughs> to, to almost everything yeah, we, they say. We need we need institutions like, yes. for example, uh, institutions of faith. Like Amida Ji is a, is an institution is a is a, a Dharma vehicle. We need yeah. Dharma vehicles. We need sanghas in order to transmit the true teaching. We need that. So uh, yes, this is our goal. Yes, this is our, our goal, goal. And, and and I think that uh, we are just uh, beginning. But I think that that. Uh, this is this is this is the right way to go, and and anything that other institutions, even the outside the uh, Pure Land Buddhism, they should uh, be this strict with the doctrine. Because, for example, if you want to practice Zen, yes, but like a real yeah. Zen master, you should be able to understand the sutras as well. It's not like the Zen masters of the past were crazy. No, of course they they all uh, yeah. even many of them had uh, faith in Amida Buddha. Uh, but there are many, a lot of divergences and mistakes in all in 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 other in other uh, schools as well. Yes, this is this uh, must be emphasized. The reason we founded Amida G and we split from Honganji and founded Amida G is uh, not because of uh, ordinary lay members of Honganji who, of course, they have true faith. Many ordinary yeah. people of Honganji have true faith. We don't deny. It. The yes. fact that uh, faith can be found among many ordinary lay members of Honganji. But we had a problem with the institution of Honganji, uh, with the leadership of Honganji, who, um, um, uh, who allowed many wrong views and many teachers with wrong views to, to, to be active and destroy the Dharma from within. This is why. Yes. Uh, okay, so uh, this was an interview uh, after in, in which I, uh, I heard your uh, uh, past experiences and I heard your understanding, which I think is okay, it's correct. So uh, into my opinion, you are welcome again into Amitra G on Thank the condition you. That you don't leave again. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't, don't, don't worry. I, I think after okay. because be, because we need people uh, who are decided, not people who come and go. People who uh, who are decided to stay here. 
So <laughs> you see, uh, after all of the things that I have seen in in, in these schools, uh, oh man, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot. It, there is a lot of chaos. So I am very grateful that Amida GX exists, and I thank uh, all my uh, Dharma brothers and sisters and you, uh, Sensei, for your efforts. And I hope to continue to contribute in whatever way I can with the organization. Yes. Yes.